now it's time. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Steve D at ExtremeLife.com. Welcome to the podcast. Really excited. I got a bunch of uh, obstacle course race athletes coming in today. They'll be joining me shortly. Um, This episode is brought to you by Peace Love Jojo Photo. Uh, Check her work out on Instagram. You can find her at Peace Love Jojo Photo at Instagram. And you could also find her at um, Peace Love Jojo jojo photo at pixieset.com or dot pixieset.com sorry um so it's peace love jojo photo at uh, dot pixieset.com uh awesome photos incredible uh eye for uh photography great work um she's doing some work for me um she also um does some great logos uh things like that so she's designing logos for me and stuff so uh really uh check her out uh you know if you want to get in contact with her you can reach her through either instagram or uh i believe through pixie set as well um dot com so check her out um check out the work awesome stuff uh other than that enjoy the podcast really excited to bring it to you today uh it should be really fun i have some fun guys their characters they're all coming in here today to talk about uh obstacle course racing and fitness and their journeys and and all kinds of stuff so uh stay tuned enjoy and uh Peace and love. All right, and here we are at ExtremeLife.com, Extreme Life Podcast. Uh, today I have some crazy people <laughs> on, on set with me. Um, we were just talking a little bit. Uh, this is another uh, fitness-based uh, uh, podcast. And I have some OCR athletes here with me. Ron, who was here with me last week. Anthony. Um, and I got uh, uh, Jesus. Dan. Jesus. Dan. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> I got Jesus with me. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, Dan. And I know Dan, too, so that was terrible. I have a brain fart there, but that's all right. Uh, and Sean is with us today, too. So uh, <laughs> I apologize, man. I feel like a jackass and for three, that. Three, two, one. Yeah, three, two, one. We'll start again. Now we're gonna leave that in because you know what? It, it is what it is. Um, but anyway, um, you know, thanks guys for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, even Dan, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, goodbye. So, um, but um, you know, I've I've run with a lot of you guys. Well, all you guys, pretty much for a long time. Uh, various races, and, and uh, you know, we're all wearing our Spartan shirts on. Some of you guys are sporting the Ultra shirts, which, uh, you know, we're, we're a little upset about, but uh, <laughs> that's all right, uh, <laughs> you know. But um, anyway, I just wanted to sit down. You know, I appreciate you guys coming on, talking about OCR stuff. I mean, this is going to be a really great conversation, I think, about all kinds of craziness that goes on in OCR in that world, and uh, also your journey in, in fitness and, and how you got started and all that stuff. So I want to hear all about that. So... So, what's your season looking like so far, you guys? I mean, what do you, what do you got going on? I know you, you know, I, we talked last week. Yeah. I know you have a crazy season happening this year. Is everybody pretty much running a lot this year? Um, yeah, probably about 20-ish, 20 races a year. Somewhere okay. around there. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little less. I have, <laughs> I don't know, maybe like four or five races, but then mixed with CrossFit competitions now. All right, so, so you've, you've drank the Kool-Aid as oh, well. I'm double fisting the Kool-Aid now. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favor, guys. Just when you talk, uh, just yeah. come into the mics a little bit yeah. just cause, for clarity reasons because otherwise my voice is going to be really loud and everybody else is going to be really soft. So um, what about you, man? Uh, I'm the same with Sean. Uh, Dan, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Still Dan, yeah. yeah still Dan. Uh, same with Sean. Probably a little bit less running than the past years, um, but more CrossFit. More CrossFit, so yeah. you drank the Kool Aid as well. So I actually drank him for the L one. So yeah. <laughs> all right, I dumped him. So you're a coach now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we both are. Oh, good, good, awesome, man. All right, so I mean, you know, looking at this, what what was your journey like? I mean, what brought you into you know any one of you guys? How you want to answer this? Uh, I mean, what brought you into this? Because most of us have a story, right? Mine, I'll tell you what, I was 
uh, probably in 2009, 10, I was overweight. I wasn't, you know, feeling good. I was a smoker. Um, you know, just not taking, I mean, I was taking care of other people in the field that I work in, but I wasn't taking very good care of myself um, as far as eating garbage and all kinds of crap. Um, and then, you know, my sister called me up one day and I, I decided to get fit, right? I said, I'm going to, I got to get healthy, right? And I'm still smoking at the time. I was like, I can't, you know, quit smoking, right? So I kept smoking and I was, uh, you know, I, I, I got these, um, the Sean T tapes. Remember those? Yep. The, the, yeah. the, the, yeah, the what was insanity one. Insanity workout. Um, so I'm in my, I do one whole cycle of that, smoking, you know, afterwards, all that crap, you know, <laughs> I decide I'm going to run a 5k, so I go out and I run a 5k, um, and like halfway through the damn thing, I couldn't breathe, um, you know, and then my sister called me up one day and said, I get, there's this thing this guy told me about, um, you know, about this thing called Spartan Race, and it's at Blue Mountain. One yep. of my favorite races. Uh, yeah. Palmerton. Palmerton, yeah. Blue Mountain, Palmerton, Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, it was like the beginning of something. You know, I, I ran that race. I ended up busting my ankle, um, but I fell in love with the sport. Um, decided to quit smoking right after that and just got, you know, and that kind of led the whole path. And, I, and I've heard that story many times from a lot of people. Uh, you know, that Spartan race kind of, and, and that type of thing kind of changed their life. It made them kind of, even CrossFit too, has changed their life to make them, you know, uh, I've seen a lot of people lose weight, get healthier, yep. all kinds of things. So, you know, what was your journey like? Because that was just yeah, a little bit of mine. It was a lot. Mine, mine's pretty similar. Yeah, I, uh, same time, 2008, 2009, 2010, I was probably about 100 pounds heavier than I am now. Mm. Smoking, drinking, you know, the whole gambit. I lived across the street from the grease trucks in New Brunswick. So I was eating crap and just totally unhealthy. Yeah. Um, I remember I wanted to get fit because the girl I was dating at the time was fit, and she was running all these 5Ks. That's rough when you're not yeah. fit. Your girlfriend, yeah. like, your girlfriend could was, kick your ass, dude. It was, it was shameful. <laughs> I, I went out for like a – tried to go out for my first run. I remember barely made it a quarter mile down the street, and I was like, I'm going to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I was like, this is not okay. Yeah. And uh, started working out, started kickboxing, actually. Was it the TKO or was yeah, it – Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, just because that was near me. So I started there, and then one of the members there was like, oh, I'm going to be doing this Spartan race. Or I just did a Spartan race at uh, Mountain Creek, I think they said. And the next one was a few weeks later in Boston. So I ended up driving to Boston for my first race back when it was uh, the, the first venue in Boston. I don't remember. Oh, Stevens Farm. Yeah, no, uh, no, uh, Amesbury. Amesbury. Oh. Yes. The one with the oh. turf field and oh, everything. I love yeah. that venue. Amesbury. The Sprint? The best one. Sprint. Yep. yep, the Amesbury Sprint. So I went up there. Um, ran my first one. Two weeks later, I signed up for the Super. Um, okay, and so then you I just just went all in. Yeah, I didn't stop from there. And then, man, we were doing 20, 30 races a year, traveling all over. And Easy. Yeah, easily. Easily, was, 30 more. And from there, man, from there I got into CrossFit. Okay. Um, so CrossFit kind of came later. Now, was that something you did to try to get better for Spartan Race, or was that something you kind of just said, I want to do? Because my story was I started doing CrossFit because uh, I wanted to get better at yeah. racing. That's and then I just kind of, <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that seems to be the, the, yeah, it's my core. Even with MMA, it's like always something to mm -hmm. do something else. But then I'm like, well, hell, I like this too. Yep, and yep. then I end up with 14 different things I'm trying to do at the same time, which yeah. then makes you completely insane. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. yeah I wanted to do it to get better at racing. And then, yeah. then I really fell in love with it. And now it's a 50-50 split. Where yeah. I don't want to stop CrossFit. I don't want to stop racing. I won't sacrifice either one. Yeah. 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 Right, and then they both suffer. <laughs> then they, everything <laughs> suffers, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. All right. Um, right I actually followed Sean. Um, so we started CKO. Um, I was brought into CKO. That's how I actually met Sean. Uh, yeah. And then we started racing. We uh, did a trifecta the first year, and then the next year we got season passes, and every single weekend we were doing yeah. races. We were going down to South Carolina, road trips. Mm -hmm. Several thousand dollars later. Uh, Rented. <laughs> and, that electric and it was cheaper then, too, man. Oh, Races yeah. were cheaper then. Cheaper. <laughs> Traveling was still the same. But, uh, you know, after yeah. hotels and food and yeah. travel, and, I mean, it's a lot of money. I saw that they're, like, what is it, thousand bucks for a season pass? This uh, that's yeah. for the age group is a thousand. Yeah. I think open is 800. Back then, it was and if you want to run elite, you have to qualify for it now. Yeah, yeah which is different. I mean, yeah. you never used to have to qualify. Which I think it's better. I agree that you have to qualify because 
how many races have we all run where like that you can't get in the heat because right. everybody in their especially the 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 races that they televise. Yes. Everybody wants to be on camera. So yeah. those elite heat and they they tend to shoot the elite heat, right? right. So um, you know, how many people shouldn't have been in those heats? Right. <laughs> that you're running with. Was, they signed up to get the earlier start time. Yeah. Um, but now the problem with the elite needing to qualify is now all those people are going to drop into the age group. So now age groups are going to sell out and fill out super fast. Yeah. And the people that should be in that division are going to get bumped down to open now. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrible. You know, it's it, like I said, there's yes. always going to be issues with it. It's just, you know, I think it's better that you do have to at least qualify. Yeah. You know, at least you have to show that you're, you're not going to be the one, you know, when you start the elite heat, and let's say it's a sprint, you should not take two and a half hours to complete that course. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> or or, or yeah. show up with a Camelback yeah. also for a sprint. For yeah. stadium. For stadium. For stadium. For stadium. <laughs> stadium you see, camelback Stadium. You see people in the elites, elite heat in a stadium with a Camelback, <clears throat> and I'm like, come on. Like, this is, yeah. <laughs> it's and, like, struggle, of and struggle with the start. They're, they're going to have water at the first mile, right? right. And, <laughs> you know, but... I mean, I guess everybody starts somewhere. We all did. It's true. Yeah. But, you know, it's like I know my first year or two, actually, I didn't run elite because I just was not nowhere near able right. to. Matter of fact, I I'd sent Hobie Call a message once because I said, you know, I was really because I get very analytical. I sent him a message on uh, – and he was the guy to beat at the time, right? Oh, he, he was the face uh, of the sport. Yeah, yeah he was they, – they we talked about it last week. They had a contract on him yep. uh, to whoever could beat him. Yeah. Right, it was. I forget what it was. I don't even remember what the contract was. But you know, he hadn't lost a race yet. Yeah, at all. Um, I Who's think the, the first guy who beat him? Novakovic. Novakovic yeah. in uh, in the world championship. Yep. Novakovic came out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he literally just came and did a race. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And won. And everybody's like, "Who the hell is this guy?" Yeah. Nobody knew. Some guy from Alaska who runs up and down mountains or something like that. That's that was the yeah, that was the rumor. A glacier. <laughs> What's that? You swim in a glacier. It's pretty good training. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know, when you're running up that type of mountain, it's yeah. it's definitely going to definitely make you a stronger, faster oh, yeah. athlete. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, so I sent him a message, and, and I said, you know, I want to run a lead. I want to get better. How do I do it? And I think his advice back to me was just run a lot. And then he said, and don't run the elite heat and stand in the front or you're going to get run over. <laughs> <laughs> that by one. him. <laughs> Probably by him, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that was, that was the, you know, back in, I forget what year that even was, but that was a long time ago. That was probably... When I started, probably around 2012, I think. Yeah, probably somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I started in 11, so you know it was probably within that year or so yeah. that I said, "All right," because I, I get focused on stuff, and I just was like, I, "I, you know, the difference between greatness and and being okay is being obsessed in a healthy manner." Right. <laughs> That's what I yeah. think it is. You have to be obsessed with something to be great. You see that in everybody who's been successful um, at anything. Uh, business people, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin actually said, I failed my way to success. So you, you got to fail a lot and just keep going. Right. You know, and I think that you see that a lot in Spartan race people. It's like you're able to handle the defeat, but keep moving and keep going and handle the pain. Yep. Yeah, it's called the, burpees. Yeah, burpees. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> matter, matter of fact, I'm thinking about bringing back the burpee mile this year. Oh, so I don't oh. know if anybody's interested in uh, I'm busy. coming to hang out. Yeah. If you picked a different day, maybe. <laughs> so I got to pick a different day for Anthony different to show day. up on that one. <laughs> New Year's Day is a rough day to do a burpee mile. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. That's the yeah. whole point of the burpee mile. We had good weather, though. Some years we had, yeah. yeah I, I mean, think. it was a little chilly. Don't get me wrong, but we never had, like, rain or snow to deal with when we did it. No, no. no. Well, I'm going to so. put this right here because I'm... Yeah, just to give I mean, me you did when you went like on the trails with it. But. Yeah, remember because uh, when did. I when I started doing this, I did it myself. It was like the I just said, you know what, I want to. I, I think I'd seen somebody had done one, and I was like, you know what, let me go try that. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna go out. And there was this trail. It's called the uh, East Coast Greenway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's up uh, canal, you know, by the canal in Manville. That's where I started, and it just happened to be snowing like hell that day. And I'm like, son of. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm still going to go do it. Yeah. So I went out and I just, I did this whole thing. And it was miserable. I mean, it was, oh, yeah. it was terrible. And, I, and that's when I decided I needed to bring some friends in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a hard life. You're suffering. Yeah. Right. You're suffering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got mean, that's share. how you got Spartan race. Yeah, got to share the misery. Starts with one person, and you just keep bringing more friends. The yeah. thing is, it isn't that bad. It isn't as bad as people think it is because you're not. It's not. I will take the burpee mile over. Fran, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one's know. quicker than the other, though. Well, yeah. the thing is, yeah. Fran is the pain is over faster, yeah. but it's way more intense. Well, two days later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, way more intense. I mean, I just redid it again, and I was like, oh, God, why did I do that? Um, but the Burpee Mile, you're kind of just like, I think, what did it take us last time we did it? Last time we did it was two years ago. I don't even know. Because last year I did 2000, and I did, <laughs> I ended up doing something by myself again because we just never organized the Burpee Mile. But I ended up doing two, 2019, or 2018 Burpees oh. yeah, I've done, I've done in that. a 24 hour period. Yeah. Um, That's rough. Yeah, it sucked. It, yeah. was, it was terrible. It was like every hour I had to do like 100 burpees. <laughs> it oh, was just God. freaking awful. Yeah. <laughs> it was awful. And by the time I got to like hour four or five, it was like, yeah. you know, yeah. you feel like you're going to die. Um, but, you know, that, that's part of the game. I mean, that's why we do what we do, right? We want, we want to pr- get better, right? Um, so what was your journey like? So mine started in 2012. Um, I was like you. I was in MMA. Uh, I was an athlete growing up, and once I got out of college, I was like, what am I going to do to compete? So I got to MMA and fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, Just move this back and yep. forth when you guys are. And then uh, we were hanging out watching a UFC, and there was a commercial for Tough Mudder. Um, that time, they had more advertising in Spartan Race. And a bunch of guys that I was with, they were like, hey, let's sign up and do this. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So we all signed up that night, and we're like, cool, Tough Mudder, 12 miles. Let's do something before that. So we started going online, seeing where the races were there, um, and we found Rock Solid Mud Run. Which <laughs> oh, goes we talked about that last week. <laughs> that yeah. goes way back. That's um, one of my favorite races yeah. ever. Yeah. Back I, I to just, back champ. Yeah. <laughs> that one goes <laughs> way back. <laughs> That's because I wasn't there the first couple years. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we signed up for that. Did that one, and that was a short course. Um, that was the only thing about a 5K or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we did that one to kind of get our feet wet, and that was somewhere in the midsummer. Um, and then... Well, Rock Solid was five miles, right? Five, yeah. That was five miles. Five, yeah. five mile run. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that was yeah. five miles with that. And the Tough Mudder we signed up for was, I believe, in November that time here in Jersey, yep. uh, in English Town. English Town. So we're like, okay, we did a five mile one, cool, that's 12. And then we saw something called the Spartan Race in September at Mountain Creek. Yeah. Um, and that time that was a super, and it was advertised as eight plus miles. We're like, all right, great. So we'll do a five mile, we'll do an eight mile one, and we'll be ready for this 12 mile tough mudder thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, rock solid was great, it was cool, but I wasn't <laughs> yet addicted to OCR yet. Their obstacles weren't anything amazing. Like, yeah, it was all right, but um, it was, yeah. And then we show up for Spartan Race, and that was amazing. So that year, I think it was the first year of Mountain Creek, um, because we went to the water park. I don't know if you guys were there. I was there. And we actually had the cliff jump. So Mm -hmm. anyone who's That was before they took the cliff jump out. Yeah. Yeah. Because people were getting hurt, I think, on those cliff jumps. It was not only that, but I heard we clogged up all their filters. Because they were coming out of the mud. (laughs) All that mud. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That'll do it. People were afraid to jump, though, too. That, too. There was a lot. People were crawling down the side and getting off the thing, because... It was probably, what, a 20 or 30-foot jump? Yeah. Well, I yeah. think they gave you the option, right? You had the burpee yeah. option, right? You could burpee out, yeah. right? Was it 30 burpees out? Because yeah. there, yeah. there were guys that were afraid. Like, they're leading the pack, and then they get there, and they look down and go, no. Yeah. They'd burpee off to the side and then run down because they just couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So we did that. It wasn't even that high, I don't think. No. I mean, to me, I did I. It's I probably didn't. at least 20 feet, somewhere yeah, around there. 20 feet, you know, it's, it's not that. I mean, We have a different adrenaline what? levels than those people that are <laughs> <running around. laughs> You just can't think about it. You just run. You just go. Jump, right. Because yeah, once you're in the air, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're exactly. already committed. No going back. It's, it's already yeah, right. like, you can't say, fine. wait a minute. Yep. <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> That's like Savage Race. They have, uh, yep. was it David Jones Locker, mm-hmm. the one you jump off of? Well, people, tough, tough Mudder has it, too. Tough Mudder has it, too. Yeah, people run up the whole thing. They get to the ledge, and they just freeze, and they stop. And you just jump right past them. Yeah, you Rap. just can't. Yeah, yeah, you can't look at it. Yeah. Don't look down. Just no, jump just out. Don't. Jump out. The only thing that worried me was I was drove. I think what was that? That was a super, right? That was a super. Yeah, yeah. I think I was actually running with a camel back at that uh, you know, for that, that was race. A Twelve mile super. Yeah, it ended up being twelve mile. Yeah, <laughs> that was so a long. Super. That's well, all those races were like nobody knew how long it was going to no. be. They said it's a super, but you look at your watch at the end and you're like, yeah. I ran thirteen friggin' miles. Yeah. How the hell did that? <laughs> so <it was> back <laughs> Norm didn't day. care. Norm was no. just like, I'm. No. You know what? Sure, eight. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> like going ten years ago, it was eighteen eight miles plus. later. Yeah, eight plus. Well, remember when they used to? They used to. I, they used to screw with us too. I don't know if you remember some the of mile, markers. mile markers. Yep. The mile markers were all wrong. Yeah. yeah, like they would say one mile, 
And then you get to another one and you say one mile. Yeah. <laughs> and you get to another one and say yeah. one mile. You're like, <laughs> so you got three of those going on. Yeah. And you just, you're already at like mile 10 in a, in a right. super, you know? Yeah. So. But that was before all of us even had like GPS watches. Like we were just starting out. So we didn't even know where we were on course. Oh. Now we all have watches. So like I see a mile marker and I know exactly how far off we are from them. Yeah. Um, but back then we were running blind. So oh, yeah. whatever Spartan Race said it was, that's where you thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> and they were wrong. They were they, wrong every they time. They just didn't care. They, yeah. were, they were, you know, and that's, that's part of it though. I think that was part of the fun of it because you didn't know what you were running, especially the first day. If right. you got there on like a Saturday and you're running that first heat. Yep. Uh, you had no idea what was coming. I yeah. mean, you're just kind of like, unless you had some inside intel, you know, like, oh, I mean, a lot of us started knowing a lot of people in Spartan Race, and we'd yeah. kind of get, hey, there's this, you know, you right. get little tidbits here and there. Yep. Um, but most of the time, you walk in there, and you're like, I don't know what this is going to be. I don't know if this is going to be, you know, this is a super, but this could be, this could be eight miles, or this could be 10 miles, 15 yeah. miles. <laughs> Who the hell knows what I'm running today? But even with the uh, maps, like now they'll release the map a couple days early or even a week before the course. Yeah. Um, back when we were doing them, they, they, there's no such thing as a map. You just showed up and you just raced. Like, yeah. we didn't know what obstacles were there, how long it was, yeah. where you were going. Um, now they'll give you the whole course map, the obstacle list, and even the elevation gain. So you can see where the peaks are on the mountain even before you get there. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and we didn't have any of that. It was no. like back in that, you know, like I said, I started in 2011 and it was a very different race oh, yep. yeah. than it is now. Not better, not worse. I mean, I, I'm not saying one way or the other because, I mean, you know, I still do races here and there. I don't do as many as I used to, but you know, it's it's just different. It yeah. become it become different. You know, um, some people say it's softer than it has been. There's no guys at the end with big sticks. Yeah, yeah we were talking around. about that. Yeah, yeah, Ron and I were talking about that last week in the podcast that. Uh, you know, we had the uh, gladiators who used to get pretty overzealous sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I volunteered as a gladiator one year at Tuxedo. Um, it's just, it's a blast. Like it was probably the coolest thing I did at a Spartan race. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it it definitely was fun. I mean, I don't know. You know, I know they took it out probably because I think we were talking about they wanted to make it more measurable, right? Yeah, because if people are f like fighting for position at the very end, you don't want the one gladiator to like tap the one guy. But then leg sweep the guy next to him, yeah. like you know, it, it dress. Or here changes. comes here comes Steve. I hate that guy. Yeah. Bash. You know, it's like watch how far I can send this guy. You know, it, it just became too much. I, I do miss it. It was a fun thing at the end. But yeah, the the runners got too involved in it because they were like all hyped up on adrenaline. So they they tried to like beat the hell out of the guy at the finish line. The finish guy, the guy was like sometimes he was a real gladiator. Sometimes it was just some like. Poor guy volunteer and he's getting like thrown into hay bales. Like, like, did you see the? Did you? Like, I'm sure you watched the podcast from last week. Did you see the picture I posted of me getting knocked across the yeah, hay bales yeah. by like three people just like bum rushing yeah. me with those pugil sticks? And I'm like halfway across the. I'm like I got a big smile on my face, right? But I'm just like. <laughs> I mean, well, I told you when I when I was a gladiator, my dad kicked my ass. Yeah, my dad came <laughs> ripping down the took the, the home stick out of your hand and beat you with it straight at you. And he just had this huge Joker grin on his face, and he grabbed the stick and just threw me up against the wall like I, like I was nothing. Yeah. You guys have seen my dad. It's not like he's like tiny. He just came no, he's ripping through man. and just beat the hell out of me. I was like up against the wall, like on the ground, like. That's yeah. for your childhood, man. He yeah, was getting back much. at you. He was yeah. <laughs> taking care of you for your childhood. I was like, yeah, come on, pops, and then I like, got laid out. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so what? I mean, we talked a lot last week, but what? Yeah, you know, I don't think we went into too much about what brought you into doing it. I mean, what brought you into you know doing I mean, Spartan? Races? I just like watching things on TV, American Gladiator, stuff like that. It was always fun to watch, and then. Tough Mudder came about. I remember I was playing softball at the time, and somebody was like, oh, they're going to open up this event, Tough Mudder. And I looked at it, and I was like, all right, let me find out what it is. And I just went there. It was 13 miles, freezing cold. It was like a week after Thanksgiving. Yeah. I think it was yeah. 2009. <laughs> Sounds 2000. miserable. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was 2009, 2010, uh, when they had like their first one in Jersey. I remember leaving, and there was still snow on the ground. Uh, and had to go in there and go through the water like and stuff Ohio? like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ohio lap two. Everybody knows Ohio. That's, yeah. that's yeah. the funny thing when you mention that. Perfect. Gandalf yeah. over here. Yeah. Yep. Gandalf the blue. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just it just spiraled from there. And then from there, like once the tough motor was over, it went to Spartan Race up in New York, out in Brooklyn. And they said their little tiny race they held there, and then it just got bigger and bigger. And yeah. every year, it just started adding more and more. Okay. 
So it was just something you saw, you wanted to be a part of, and, and you know, it, it became a lifestyle, yeah. really. I mean, that's, that's one thing I see with people that get into this. One of two things happen when someone does a Spartan race, right, or, or any OCR race, any tough OCR race. Let's yeah. just put it that yeah. way, any hard, because there's some out there. I mean, I've done some, and I'm not going to mention any names, mm-hmm. Warrior Dash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Color. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, that, you know, I went and did, and I was like, all right, I did this in 29 minutes, or 21 minutes. I'm like, I don't even feel like... <laughs> You're not satisfied. <laughs> I need to do it again or it. something, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I ended up running it three or four times, um, and I never did one after that. I mean, not, you know, like I said, there's a certain level, and if that introduces people to it, you know, I mean, I think it should be billed more as a beginner yeah. race rather than, you know, an, a true OCR event. Um, but, you know, Spartan race, the first one you do, you're like, you either love it yep. or you're like, I'm never doing that again. Because I've known people. I've known CrossFit people yeah. who have come to me and said, Jesus, I have a whole new respect for you guys and what you do. Mm-hmm. Because I went and I did uh, – there was a couple guys who never did a race before. They were, Spart- they were, they were CrossFit athletes. Mm-hmm. This was a few years ago. And they decided they're going to go do the Beast. Hear my dog? <laughs> it's like, hmm, I'm going to go do the beast. Um, well, it had to be Killington then, then. years ago, right? Um, no, it was, it was Jersey. It was the first, the first I think it was the year. first year oh, they did Jersey. Oh, okay. And no. Norm had built the course, so I yeah. knew it was going to be... I remember that course. I knew it was going to be a rough course. Yeah. And Ron, you were course. assisting Norm, I think, yeah, with that course, Norm right? Yeah, that course. Which, you know, cheater. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Nobody so, got lost. Nobody on a hole. Um... But, you know, they're like, we're going to go do this race. What do you have to say? You know, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? I said, go do it. I mean, I, I think you should start with a different race. Like, no, no, no. We're, and these are all fit people, right. really fit people. But there's a difference between being fit in a certain way and being fit in a different right. way. Being right. strong and muscle and CrossFit is totally yeah. different than being lean running up a ski slope on a mountain. It, it can help you, but certain muscles haven't developed the way right. they need to. Like running on a mountain is very different. We were talking about that last week. When you're running on a mountain, you're running on an incline. Your ankles have to be used to taking that. Your knees have to be used mm-hmm. to taking that. You're, you develop muscles in your legs that are a little bit different. Um, so those guys all came back, and they all finished, yeah. right? And the funny thing was is I think that was – that might have been the year they were doing the ultra. Did they do the ultra there the no, first not year? The no, first not year. the first year. Okay, so so it wasn't that year, but because I, I some reason I remember them saying something about the ultra, but I don't. So know. it might have been twenty sixteen. Was that the first ultra in Jersey? You might have Probably been. Probably somewhere yeah. around. Might have been. Yeah, it might have been. No, that was last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me look at my yeah. shirt. I'm looking to see what, right. what year I had on mine. Um, but yeah, they they uh, they came back and they're like, man, I have a whole new respect for everything because they're like that takes a whole different kind of toughness it's a different mental toughness right. not that you know uh, you know when you look at crossfit that takes a whole i mean there's a lot of spartan mm-hmm. rate as, race athletes that go into crossfit that really struggle mm-hmm. right same thing happens the other way mm-hmm. you know it's kind of a both way thing and that's why like i said why i got involved in it was because i wanted to get stronger because i thought okay if i develop i already developed a skill of running <laughs> Now I would need to get stronger to handle certain yeah. certain things, right? Certain obstacles, whatever you're trying to get through. Because you're not just running the whole time. To me, running by itself is boring. Yep. I, I don't just run. I mean, in training, you got to do it. You got to do a lot of running. But, you know, the thing that really intrigued me about the OCR events was that you're not just running, right? Because I, I wasn't going to just sign up for a marathon mm-hmm. and run 26 miles and think about Lord knows what yep. while I'm running. Um, I wanted something to do. Right? Is that what brought you guys into that too? I mean, it's 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 not just running. It's you're, you're running. You're running on a mountain. The mountain is the biggest obstacle yeah. always. It's but ninety-five percent of the race. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If not more. And you go up the whole time and end up at the bottom. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> it's, up, it's up both ways. <laughs> I really don't. I don't know how that works. I, somehow they figured that out. I've ran two road races, like half marathons, like one in AC, one in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Beautiful venue to do it in Vegas. Like, you're on the strip, you run up and down, but it was. It was boring as hell. Oh, yeah. Because you're just, like, you're listening to your own heartbeat. You're just Mm kind of running. And some people love it. I mean, I guess that's their zen place, and that's okay. But I think, you know, OCR athletes are a little different. (laughs) <laughs> they're a little yeah. different we're not that attention span we need something to break it up yeah we're, we're like OC, <laughs> you know ocd in some way we just yeah. want to you know we gotta we gotta you know we have attention deficit disorder we, we want to make sure you know we got something to do it's not yeah. just running you got to climb something you got to go up something you got to f- potentially fall off something right. there's got to be some element of danger to yeah. it i, I mean, think that's when you're running on the road 
you know it's going to be on the road. Right. You mm-hmm. just know that maybe there's going to be a hill, that maybe it's not, left, right. On Watch out for a couple potholes that might yeah. be there. Yeah. Watch yeah. that guy blowing through the stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, but on the mountain, you never know. I mean, there could be a tire rolling through. We were talking about that last week, too. South Carolina? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's like up, down, bucket carry. So you have to almost have to pace yourself knowing that in the, you know, in the next mile, there might be something that's going to be fatiguing. Yeah. Years ago when we started, her coist was my kryptonite. Like, yeah. it was always heavier than me, and I just was dreading it every single Turned time. Turned into and a rope climb. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or a launch, one of the other. That's great. It almost got you two weeks ago at West Point. That too. <laughs> well, the her coist is always the worst if it rains the night before. Right. Or the day and before. Because then the sand, everything yeah. gets wet, and what, what weight... 180 pounds the day before now weighs 240 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> and you're you, were, like, you were in Mohegan Sun, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That we one. Even, we couldn't even get those things off the ground. It yeah. took us four people to make it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was back when uh, Pac was running. I remember Pac was yeah. in first place, got to the Hercoist, couldn't budget, had to do well, his burpees. Well, he weighs what? About 110 pounds? Yeah. 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 Soaking wet? Had to do his burpees. And still, I think two or three of the top five or ten guys yeah. had to burpee out the Hercoist. Well, was there only seven people in the Elite Heat that could finish it? It was, could finish it. It was rough. I, it was very. I remember it rained like heavily the night before, yeah. and because I went up there to go do it, and I jumped on it, and it didn't budge. Yeah. I was able to get it up eventually, but it took like you could probably do the burpees faster than actually getting that hercoise yeah. up. Yeah, because that's how much it weighed. It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. That's rough. I I always dreaded that because you knew the night before if it's raining out, you're like, oh my god, there's gonna be a hercoise, and that thing is gonna yeah. be brutal. Or even the plate drag. Because yeah. oh, yeah, all of a sudden yeah, you, try, you go to take and the whole plate is covered in a puddle of water because mm-hmm. it holds all of it and the bag's soaking wet more water on top of it. Like, <laughs> so so you ruts. Yeah. yeah. And then you pull it and it gets stuck in a rut and you got to go and lift it up and then pull it back again. Like Yeah. No, it's, it's been some of those some of those obstacles. I think they've gotten better at that too. Yeah. Like with certain obstacles. Like they took some out that probably like we were talking about. Tarzan's you know, fine. The Tarzan swing. No, that was a good one. Yeah, I like that. I, 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 I happen to have fun. an issue of it. I happen to like that one, but you know, there's People's some. People's ankles weren't. Huh? People's ankles weren't. No, no, we're no. getting. Yeah, well, you land wrong, and that's that's a wrap. I mean, <laughs> but you know, back in the. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm laughing because I remember doing seeing the Tarzan swing at multiple events and just watching Anthony just. <laughs> Sitting back at the end, just roasting people with a beer in his hand, <laughs> just like metal around his neck, just hanging back with a bunch of people, and just watching people go, "Don't put your leg around the rope." And then somebody just nuts it right with the rope yeah. and just right into the water. Like, told you. So that, that was Temecula. Well, that was part of you know when you run those races, you get to sit at the end at the, yeah. and just kind of because all the obstacles are pretty much. You know, you got a lot of obstacles at the right. end. Oh, yeah. Some races, they're all the way up at the top, but yeah. then they have the ski lift that'll take you up there. And I remember the year we went up, remember we went up to, uh, my God, we were like, let's go up to the spear throw and fuck around up there, right? Oh, Palmerton. Yeah. The same thing, Blue Mountain. And you and I are throwing spears backwards. Yeah. We're going backwards, <laughs> tomahawk, <laughs> underhand. <laughs> People are like, what the hell are these guys doing? <laughs> we're just throwing them all kinds of different ways, trying. That was before they put the ropes on them, so you can't, mm-hmm. you can't really do yeah. that now. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Stare, everyone stop. We have to get them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the worst part. They're like, oh, this section's closed off. We're picking up spears. We're like, what? We're in the middle of a race. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can't close a section. <laughs> about? There's, there's, you know, we're, we're, we got stuff on the line here, you know, yeah. and we're running, you know. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, like I said, they've improved a lot of things. They, yeah. They've, you know, even the when I first saw the strings, we were talking about this last week, too. Is I was like, I don't, I don't think I like this. It's Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Ohio yeah. was oh, a yeah. rope. Was that or Tuxedo? No, Ohio. Was when they debated, yeah. was when they first put it out. I remember Tuxedo. I, we did uh, the Hurricane Heat, and we tested it out. And I'm like, and to the, the Spartan staff, I was like, these ropes aren't long enough. They're like, oh, what do you mean? I there was are like, some we, times. We yeah. wrapped it out, and it was like it was like three feet short. Like, <laughs> you might want to change this. <laughs> People are going to be pretty pissed. They've made yeah. some improvements yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Measured it twice, <laughs> cut once. Not like yeah. throwing the rope and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was telling Steve last week when we went to Ohio and they debated and you know they break, first brought it out and I was like the guys, I just gonna make it. He goes, yeah, yeah, it's fine. My first throw, it pulled the whole railing and it just fell over. He's like, I'm like, it didn't reach. Like it knocked the whole rail right. over. I had to walk like four like four things down and then go do burpees. That's why go do burpees. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, you can't drag it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Do burpees. laughs> 
So if it's too short, that happens. But then they made them longer, and then people were throwing them oh, and over the hay bale. <laughs> yeah. And then it hangs over the edge, <laughs> and, and you can't pull it back right. then. <laughs> So they had to or if you do, that. it gets stuck and swings back at you. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so they have to find that perfect distance where it'll actually make it. Yeah. No, it's like I said, there, there's been a lot of changes. And, you know, I remember throwing a spear and, and I accidentally hit the wooden head yeah. at oh, the yeah. top. And, and stick it right in that. And, and then I was like, hey, I'll take that as a win, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, ran, I kept running. Yep. But, um, you know, what's the craziest stuff you've seen on a race? I mean, that, that's probably a pretty cool question for, uh, I mean, there's some crazy stuff. I could go on and Besides on and bears? on. Well, you could start there. Bears we could go bears. from yeah. bears. I mean, bears, are always good. bears been a few times. Like, yeah. which race? It's usually Jersey. Yeah, Jersey gets. I probably Jersey think always gets probably bear. two or three times I've seen bears in yeah. Jersey. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the bears. You've seen some bears. What about other stuff? Anything else? Like snakes. Tuxedo always has those long black snakes. What crazy stuff you've seen people do? I was just saying, I've, I've <laughs> <That's> had <it. laughs> a couple in the woods going at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Well, there's an obstacle for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is it 30 burpees if you fall off or not? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I mean, we were talking about the tire coming down the mountain. I remember yeah. one year, oh, you yeah. know, I mean. That video is crazy. Yeah. And I was at that race, and I remember, like, hearing tire, 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 yeah. and you just. <laughs> boing, boing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like. That thing's hit somebody. It's over. Oh, I mean, that, that's was probably that a five hundred fifteen. I don't remember what year that was. I, I, I just they all bleed together after a while. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. You know, but that's like when Spartan had the log carry. Yeah, oh, the logs. So people flying. go up the mountain with their log that's probably this big and this wide and weighs I don't know what forty fifty pounds whatever yeah. it is. They get to the top of the mountain, they slip, they drop their log, and that thing starts tumbling oh, yeah. down. <laughs> And then you just hear people start yelling, log, and you turn it's back, and you just see a thing tumbling at you. Like, <laughs> well, I was telling Ron, la like, last week we were talking, and it's like, I heard that same thing happen at a race. Uh, I don't forget which race it was. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. But you know how some people bring their, they'll, they'll run with their son or their right. whatever. Yeah. And uh, Probably kids that are too young to be running with yeah. them, but they're running. So I hear, log, log. Log and it's going, and then I hear kid, kid, <laughs> kid. And I just see this kid tumbling down. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? So there's some crazy stuff that happens in these yeah. races, you know. I mean, it's, um, what would you suggest? Like, let's say I'm somebody who, uh, who is somebody who's thinking about doing a race, somebody who's not fit, somebody who's sitting on a couch right now, um, you know, not in good shape, maybe has a lot of bad habits. Mm -hmm. um, what would you guys suggest, uh, you know, they do if they want to do a race or, you know, what would be a good path? I'd say start running. Just start a running? Lot. I mean, yeah. the day the, it's a the, race. The, op the obstacles are the, the fun part, but 95% of it or plus is, is running. So if you can only run a certain distance, then that's going to be the distance you're only going to be able to do. Yeah. Carrying I'll say, a bucket, you know, log carry, hercoise, I mean, that's just... The glamour part of it, um, and the strength, but you know, everybody you, wants their picture. Yeah, that's the, everybody right. wants their profile yeah. picture, yeah. man. The, the fire's really cool too. Ask Danny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that last week too. Yeah, the good. whole goal is to jump over the fire, right, right. Not, 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 through, not through, not directly yeah. into it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just running. So was that the same? Was that Ohio? No, that no, was tuxedo. That was tuxedo. Okay, that was tuxedo. all right. Tuxedo. I was gonna say I, I thought that for some reason I thought that was the same race that you limped the whole damn race. No, that was, <laughs> that was Ohio trifecta day. You might have been more specific there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, oh, that ain't been a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, one, the one that there was supposedly a special medal for. <laughs> but now they do. Now right. for trifecta weekends, people get a special medal. Okay, all right. We did a trifecta in one day, yeah, and we didn't get, get anything. Didn't get a damn right thing. Not sure. We got Domino's pizza. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we all got Domino's pizza. <laughs> we all got Domino's pizza. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember everybody looking so beat up after that race because the weather was just screwy. Yeah, it started hailing mid-race. Oh, it did everything. Yeah, yeah, I think everything that It could rained, happen. it snowed, it hailed. Maybe it was sunny the yeah. very beginning when we first started. I think it was sunny when we started because yeah. I was thinking to myself that this isn't going to be so bad. Well, you know it's bad when Bowtie is not in his Speedo. Bowtie actually ran with a garbage bag on because he was so yeah. freezing cold. Lap three. Did he? Yeah. 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 Lap That's three. how you know <laughs> it was a cold race. <laughs> yeah. The sprint for lap three is Bowtie and I both in garbage bags. Yeah. Yeah. So worst race. Worst race ever. Your your most difficult, challenging race. What was that? I'd say first time doing Killington. Oh, Killington wow. 2013. I'd say my first time doing Killington too, yeah. Okay. 
That was probably it's just such nothing. a mental. Yeah. A single pull and spring water bottle. That was the only thing I had. On Killington? In you ba- mad in basketball man. You're a madman. In basketball shorts. I didn't know what I was doing. No. When I, was, <laughs> I, was <laughs> I was the same I had way. tennis shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I was the same. Basketball shorts. I didn't have a camel back yet. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I maybe had trail shoes at that time. I don't think I even had those yet. The, the original Reeboks? Yeah. I think I had so, new no. balance. No, I had the new balance. The trail runners. New balance. Yeah, yeah, that's what I had. I had yeah. Abrams. Oh, yeah. I never ran. In, yeah. I never I ran in those. No. I ha- I did a couple times, and then I got really bad plantar fasciitis. So did I. Oh yeah, and so then I, I just said it. never again. Yeah. I I literally and and you know anyone I talk to with those, I mean everybody who ever used them, I mean I don't know if they're still around. I don't know what they're doing, but um, anyone I've ever talked to who ran in them Vibrams, you know they all had foot problems because yeah. you're not used to it. Well, that's and that's that's what I usually get from people. When they tell me, you know, when I tell them what was happening, it's like, no, you can't just go. Because I'm, you know, I'm just kind of all in, right? right? Yeah. So I just put the darn things on. I'm like, oh, look, I can see my toes. That's cool. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> and, you know, this is like barefoot running. I'm like a caveman now, right? Yeah. And I'm running. And I went out and I did a 5K. And I'm like, shit, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to hurt for days. Yeah. <laughs> shit, that hurt a lot. I don't think I was running too much for the next few days after that, to be yeah. honest with you. But, yeah. Um, but... You know, those shoes were like I said, I, I, you know, people go out, you see it all the time, right? In those races where people come out Mm -hmm. (laughs) ill-equipped, right? They're like, I'm going to go out and do this race. I've seen people run in shoes. I'm like, why are you running in those? Mm -hmm. They're covered in mud. They're just slipping down the hill. No grip at all on them. Or the people that duct tape their shoes. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, They don't realize that you're losing traction. (laughs) It's not the bottom of your foot slippery. It's a solid, (laughs) smooth surface. I mean, (laughs) you probably all ran in old tennis shoes yeah for our first, first start oh yeah yeah i don't know I what mean, the I hell i remember doing tough mudder and it was like a pair of shoes that i had for like five years or something like that. i was like right. oh yep. you know they're gonna get money i'm just gonna do this i don't need traction to well, you, yeah that, to that, 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 that half, half pipe, pipe. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or even just like the rolling mud and you're people just like are slipping. dragging me up oh yeah i think i don't remember what i ran in but i definitely ran in shoes that were not good for for doing oh, yeah. that oh, yeah. you know we all ran in crappy shoes basketball con shorts or something you see soccer cleats all the time I never I just see those, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, ooh. No. Yeah, that's bad. That's yeah, going to be bad. I mean, I've seen people slide, get all the way up a hill of yeah. mud, and then slide all the way back oh, down yeah. a hill of mud. Oh, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> you know. But, you know, we've all been there. I think, you know, you learn your lesson, though. Your Absolutely. first race, I mean, I learned mine with, with Blue Mountain. Like I said, 2011 Blue Mountain. That was a terrible race. Um, I remember taking off at the, at the starting line. I was telling you last week, we had five people that started with us. Um, my sister, me, one of her friends, and somebody else, and then, you know, there was five of us, and we went taking off, and it was that first hill, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so we're just running up that hill, and I think Hobie had already hill. finished. Yeah. Yeah. It it's a not little, a hill. It's a, it's a mountain. <laughs> it's a little hill. It's a little hill. No, no it, I mean, it literally was a ski slope, right? Yeah. So you're taking off up this ski slope. So what people ski down, we run up, right. which people, you know, I say that to people sometimes. I'm like, you're out of your damn mind. Why would you do that? <laughs> so, well, because we want to be fit, right? Yeah. You want to you you test yourself. You yeah. want to test to see how good you really are. You want to see how good misery. you really are. And what? We love misery. Yeah, we're all yeah. a little yeah. misochistic. We're, we're a little Because paid for it. Right. <laughs> right. If we're not sore or beat up or banged up after a race, yeah. I, I'm not satisfied. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, That's I just Monday. I just want to say everybody everybody sitting at this table is a little bit off, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of just the way it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> Including myself. Um, because, you know, you go out and you do this stuff and you say, you know, I just paid money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to literally torture myself for whatever yeah. time period it took to get up, you know, get through. But I remember taking off up that hill and one girl quit right off the bat. Like she got off like halfway up the hill. And I think it went up, and then you got to this rope climb, like where they had the oh, yeah. rope hanging yeah, it's down. Yeah, a little and, bit of rope, and yeah. then back. And up. you just yeah. kind of go up the hill. Well, she's like, "I'm not doing this," and left. Right, so she was done. Wow. I ran all of it. So you go up, 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 up. You get all the way, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, "Okay, when I get to the top, man, because this hill's killing me. When I get to the top, I'm going to get that turnaround, and when I'm running down, I'm going to fly like yeah. a, you wouldn't believe." And then right? you get to the sandbag. Well. <laughs> You get to the obstacles at the top. Yeah, it's always like dun dun dun. Yeah. You know, it, it, it. You know, we were talking about that last week too, with the hills that just kind of go up, and then you think, okay, I'm at the top, then you turn, you see another hill. Yeah, <laughs> that's like Virginia was the, best, the old wintergreen Virginia. Everyone, every time you kept going up, you see a plateau. You're like, oh, that's it. Well, it was and also he, the fog. 
And the fog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you can never you can see never the top, top of the mountain. Like. <laughs> there is no top. It just keeps it going. Just keeps going. <laughs> it just keeps going, and then somehow you end up at the bottom. Right. That's generally what happens. I don't know what they do. Somehow they change the laws of physics, and <laughs> they're able to do that. You go through some kind of time warp or whatever happens. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I remember getting to the top. I'm like, okay, great. I'm at the top. <laughs> hey, calm down. <laughs> all right. Storm. Chill. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, just, she, she wants to be part of the podcast. But I got to the top. I turned around, and four steps in, I, I twisted my ankle and rolled it. Oh, you, know, you know about that, Anthony, right? Every race. <laughs> <laughs> Expert in that field. <laughs> He's a professional. Professional at that. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it, then, I, then I'm like, oh. and so I limped my way the whole rest of the race. So defeated, right? Mm-hmm. And then, then we got to the end where that they used to have the A-frames, but they'd soap up the other side. Mm-hmm. And they had the slippery hard wall. Ass, used to be soap. Yeah. hard-ass hay bales on the other end yeah. of that. And I went up and over and, and down, and, I, and that's when I snapped the foot mm-hmm. <laughs> and finished it off at the finish line. Um, but, you know, it, it, you, know you, get, you go through these things, and you're like, you know, you get into this space where you're like, all right, I love this. And I don't know why, but I just messed up my foot so bad, but I want to go do another one. Yeah. And I don't know if I did another one that year or not, but I know it was shortly thereafter, maybe the following year, I started racing a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and it was like, it came from that experience, you know, because I just knew that it was something I love, you know, I wanted to do, I wanted to get better at, something I could do, um, you know, and, and uh, like I said, despite the injury, you know, and I think that, you know, we all have stories like that. I mean, we've all gotten messed up on courses yep. or, you know, gotten barbed wire stuck in our, our heads. Mm. and Ooh. Or in your ass. Yeah, my ass. Uh, in your ass. <laughs> you know, I mean, there are all kinds of things that happen out there, you know. So it, it's it's one of those things where you – but the type of person that what, – what is the type of person that really – what would you say the type of person is that gets involved in this and, and competes at an elite level? Well, it's something that's not consistent. I, you could do Palmerton every single year, and it's always different. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, the obstacles might be the same, but they're going to be in different locations. There's yeah. going to be different trails right. that you can do. I mean, Norm would find, <laughs> I don't know. It, like, he, We're like, going to get bought, into another Norm Cox set, conversation. Yeah, he he right would buy, yeah. buy different sections of <laughs> Blue Mountain and just make his own trail. Yeah. I mean, so it was like you always did. Norm didn't like trails, according to no. No. Norm was like, well, I'm yeah. not going to no. give him the trail. Like, like, I have to machete. make their own. Yeah. Machete was his trail. Yeah, I used so, to bushwhack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he but, bushwhacked, and Woody tends to use more like the fire trails yeah. and stuff. Yeah. but I'm going it's, it's, to try to get Norm on the show one of these days. I'm going to try to get him on. Yeah. Yeah. Where's he, at? Where's he right now? In Vermont? I have Vermont. no idea. Probably in Vermont. I'll probably yeah. have to go up to him to, to get him on, but, you yeah. know, probably a good, cool, cool show to yeah. talk about. You know, his experience with the races and, and how he even, you know, I mean, I don't know what his methodology was for, yeah. for course design, but, uh, you I know, think it was I don't know if he had one. He would just, up. He yeah. just <laughs> go in the woods and be like, oh, that looks hard and we're going to go this way. And then he just keep finding whatever's the trickiest route. I think he would just start bushwhacking, yeah. tape it off, and then he'd come back and measure exactly probably what it well, was. Well, whatever it was, he had something special yes. because it was just, you know, you went to a race and if you knew Norm designed that course, it was different than anybody right. else's design. Like if you went to a course that wasn't Norm designed, it was good. It was fun. But you knew if you got on I mean, that's why they, they were making like F Norm shirts. Yeah. Patches. Oh, patches. He, he, he would start hiding yeah. his own. He made his own patches. Did and he? throughout the yes. course, <laughs> he would hide his patches like under a log or random spots yep. and have people try to find them. Yeah. I mean, so there was something special about how he designed. Like, you knew it was just going to be, even if it was a sprint. Right. You're like, this is going to be a tough race. Yeah. This well, is tuxedo is a sprint. Yeah. It's yeah. So the, nor- the norm fecta was tuxedo yeah. sprint. Palmerton for the super, and then Killington was your beast. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and Killington, we've all talked about it. We talked about it a lot last week too. It was a, that was a brutal race every yeah. year. Every year it was brutal. Yeah. Norm's mind was always at work. Yeah, it was never the course, and he was pissed off if it was a nice day. <laughs> it, it was yeah. pissed off if it was a nice day, or <laughs> if he realized that an elite finished in like a time where he thought it would have been like an hour and a half, and they finished in an hour. He was mad. Yeah, like so he just came out the next year even more furious and like try to find stuff because right. I remember doing course run for him and setting up markers and this and that and I would be there on Monday basically do the entire course and then I come back Tuesday morning and he's like oh yeah by the way I found a lake I'm like what? <laughs> he made one he's like yeah I, I, he's like I found this pool, he's like, I found this pool of water it's like <laughs> that's why I lost so much I yeah. created a lake yeah he's like, he's like I, I found this body of water it's like right by like mile one and a half so when you go up there Make a quick left and uh, mark it off there so we can push you guys through there. What do you think? And I'm like, what do you mean? What do I think? 
think I gotta run this on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's freezing cold. There's still snow on the mountain, and you're putting yeah. me through water a mile in. He's like, yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> Okay. One, of, one of my favorite, uh, it was New Jersey, one of my favorite barbed wire crawls, and it was one of my, well, not my favorite, most brutal that I've done, um, was the year in New Jersey where it was snow on the ground, and they did the barbed wire crawl mm-hmm. right through in, the snow. Oh, that was yeah. the beast, yeah. Yep, that was the first year of the beast. What's, yeah. the, what's yep. the first year? The first that year of the beast. That was awful, yep. man. I got a picture of me, literally, because I had, I had, at that point, it was a nice day. It wasn't a tough, it no, wasn't, it wasn't like a bad day, but the warm. snow. Right. Was I don't know what he did. I think he had a snowmaker's on somewhere, but you know, but there was snow on that barbed wire, and that was a long barbed wire crawl. Yeah. And I have a picture of me literally standing up in the barbed wire crawl because it would burn because yeah. oh, I yeah. had no oh, shirt yeah. on. Not only that, but it was cutting you up because it was ice shards. People got out of that barbed wire crawl and their hands were bleeding. They're just oh, yeah. cutting themselves <laughs> it was everywhere. The most awful barbed wire crawl yeah. I ever did, but. I, I love the picture is the most right. badass picture I think I've ever taken in a barbed wire crawl. Yeah. Like, because I've got a bunch of pictures of, of me crawling through it, but then that one standing up, I just like, oh my god! And you can see just like the redness yeah. in my shoulders and, and arms because of how brutally cold it was. Because you're rolling. Yeah. You know that's how we you know that's how we learn to get through the barbed wire as fast is not doing the the army right. crawl but to roll through. Yeah. Them. So you just figure you're rolling through. I think he did it there just to stop people from doing that, probably, because it yeah. was, you know. I mean, Norm definitely fed our addiction. So our addiction is to keep pushing ourselves, go harder, yeah. see how far we can go. It's got to be harder next year, right? right? That's it. And that's what Norm did. Every year, he would try to go harder and harder and harder just to see how far we can go. Yeah. And God help you if you ever say that the race wasn't that hard. Because oh, I've oh, seen that happen. Oh, oh, <laughs> I've oh, seen that. He always came back with it. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that. I think it was also New Jersey one year where somebody said that the beast wasn't that bad. No, the I first year the beast first year. wasn't that bad. The Barbara crawl was hard, but the course itself wasn't, wasn't that, that intensive. Tough. And, a and lot I think of people, people put that, that out there. Yeah. And then the next year. Yep. It was terrible. And, and that was the year I was like, all right, I'm going to go do an ultra this year. That was the first year for the ultra. Yeah. yeah. And we started together. Yeah. yeah. I started, didn't finish. Started that, was the only, that was the only DNF I've ever gotten in my entire career of racing yeah. was that was that race. Um, I don't know what – yeah, I just didn't make the timeline. I didn't make the time clip. But, you know, it was one of those things where it's like the next year it was just – I mean, it was bad. Yeah. It was like – I definitely right. missed he heard He heard the message loud and clear. Yeah. That, that was found that special area. <laughs> That was essentially Norm going, Dear Satan, I owe you one soul, and this is my map. And he just kind of like twisted it and made it his own. Yeah. No, it was a, that was a tough ride. I remember that race being excru- excruciating. Yeah. But well, when year. Norm left Spartan Race, I know he was going to start his own company. Has there been an update on that? I don't think he... Nothing happened? I don't think it happened. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard anything, but... If he did, I'd go do it. Yeah, I would. Definitely, Everybody would. I would go do yeah. it. I mean, he would definitely be, uh, you know, because like I said, whatever. Not that the races are. I mean, the races are great. They're yeah. still good. They're still awesome. They, they're still a lot of fun. But like I said, there was something special about he what Absolutely. he did, what his design. Um, you know, and you knew that. You know, yeah. everybody knew that. But he did uh, miss the one best part of that day, though. Well, that, that uphill barbed wire. Uh huh. How that day ended. Remember how that day ended? No. We almost got the Rodizio. We you guys almost got out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> too much food. <laughs> yeah, we I'm almost, thinking of a race. No, 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 no. We, we, we had left this. You eat too much. Yeah. <laughs> you eat too much. What do you want? Get out. <laughs> we, 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 we left this 13 plus mile race. We all drove back down to my house. Yep. Showered, got ready, and went to Rodizio. And the manager got very mad because we were, <laughs> you were eating too much. There were well, six of us, and we just could not stop eating well, because we just got done racing. Yeah, I mean, those races, especially those brutal races, man, you get done, you're like, ah, I just need to eat everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, were, we were like 40 minutes in. He was like, pineapple? I'm like, no, we don't want no pineapple yeah. yet. Like, bring over the cheesesteak. Bring over this. <laughs> bring over the pork loin, the chicken. We're like, just come Let on. me tell you something. This man right here is the world champion of... of, <laughs> of, of um, <laughs> I don't know anybody who can eat a Rhodesia like this guy because I'll sit there. They, you know, they bring the meat. They just keep throwing it on your plate. As soon as it touches his plate, it's like it's gone. gone. Yeah, it's I, I don't know how the hell he does it. And I'm like, I'm sitting there. I got all kinds of crap still on my plate. I'm like, and he's like, all right, where's more food? Yeah. <laughs> like, how does this clean. even happen? We used to do that after the Burpee Mile too. We'd go do the Burpee yeah. Mile. Um, and go, that was the tradition, do the Burpee Mile on New Year's Day and then go to Rhodesio and just eat like fiends because, yeah. I mean, what did it take us to do to Burpee Mile every year? It about two hours, two hours and some change. Yeah, I forget what the actual times. We had to go back and look at it, but it was yeah. two it was and like, change. It was like 1,200 burpees. 
something like yeah, that. Yeah, we mapped it out to where like it was like five foot increments divided by. Yeah, we figured out like you know we because we do four laps around a four hundred mm-hmm. meter track yep. um, outside in January. <laughs> we tried counting. I got stuck at like. I, lo- I, I lost pretty much time. my mind was <laughs> shot. I was like, "All right, Stop. number. Wait a minute. Start, you know, I'm, like, I'm like, whatever. I, I, I've given up. I'll, I'll do an estimated amount. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, no, I would. Th- you know what? Like I said, I'm thinking about doing it, bringing it back this year. So uh, you know, I'll count on all four of you guys coming mm. and yeah. uh, you know, hanging out and see. Don't go out too hard tonight before New Year's yeah. Eve. Are you doing the party for New Year's Eve? <laughs> sure. I do remember lap. Lap four, the final lap of that, we put hurdles in the way, which is really messed I up. I have some awesome pictures of that, man, of us putting, like, we put obstacles in the way of each other yeah. as we were going oh, around, because it's like, and, you know, oh, God, I can't remember the girl's name. What was her name? Kara? Kara. Kara. Uh, you know, she was like, I don't know, she was like a beast, man. That girl. She was like Miss Marvel. Yeah. She was crazy. She went out there. She's just like blew by us. Like she almost lapped us at one point. <laughs> yeah, we're like, I'm not getting lapped by a girl. Wow. <laughs> like, Steve, where did you bring? Like, <laughs> she she was at my gym. She's like, you know what? I want to come do the Burby Mile yeah. with you guys. And I honestly didn't think she'd show up. But I gave her the, you know, most people don't. You know, yeah. most people are like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they give me all that. And then it's usually me and Ron or me, Ron, and somebody else. But, right. but um, you know, uh, she's like, she showed up. And I'm like, oh, okay. She wants to show up, but she was like a Division One basketball. Okay, I mean she was a collegiate athlete, you know, and and uh, you know young. She was in her twenty, early twenties, and just fit as hell. Yeah. And she just <laughs> went off like, I don't know where the hell she. You know, we started off together. <laughs> we didn't end together. No, I think she beat no, us. We did not. She beat us, but uh, I don't know how, by how much. She didn't lap us, I don't think, but she no. definitely came close. We were like both of us picked up the pace the last <laughs> lap. We're like, I'm not. Getting laughed by a girl, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm probably gonna get in trouble for saying that. It might be uh, uh, genderly insensitive or something <laughs> like that. I don't know, but uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where you know, it, people just they they find this spot, they find this fitness level that they want to be at, and that's another thing. You know, I started the burpee mile just for fun because I thought, you know what, let's test it, let's see mm-hmm. if it'll, let's, you know, and I think you have to. I'm one of those people, I don't know if you guys are like this, but I have to have something to train for. Right. I cannot just be training for the sake of training. Some people can, you know, and there's a difference between training for competition and training for fitness, mm-hmm. right? I say this all the time. Training for fitness, you know, is, you know, if you spend 40 minutes, an hour, three to four to five days a week at the most maybe, you know, you're, you're going to be a fairly fit person as long as you eat right and you, you take care of yourself. You don't smoke. You don't do, you know, now don't vape. Because yeah. <laughs> vaping's like wiping people out now. Um, who'd have thunk it? Yeah. Well, who didn't see that coming? <laughs> yeah. didn't see that coming. It's funny. I posted, I don't know if anybody saw it, but I posted a bunch of pictures from like the 30s where doctors are saying, uh, yeah. you know. Smoking's good. Smoking's good for you. <laughs> do it. Yeah. yeah you can you know. it Yeah. Nine, or what was it? Uh, four out of five doctors smoke camel. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, so vaping's kind of going. I think we're going to see a lot more come out about that that's yeah, going right, going that way. But, you know, if you take good care of yourself, you could be a fairly pretty fit person uh, with that type of time frame. If you're training for competition, that's a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. That's a whole – and I'm not even sure how good for you it is uh, because, you're, you know, you see people who train for competition. I know in the CrossFit world it's two-a-days – yeah. Uh, you're training in the morning, you're training in the evening, you do AM, PM, mm-hmm. same thing, Spartan race, you're probably doing two-a-days if you're an elite athlete, yeah. you know, you're doing two-a-days, you get your rest time, but you're also spending a lot of time doing stuff like that, I mean, we're, there's a lot of people who do, uh, one of my favorite things is float tank, I do float tank, I don't know if you guys know what that Never is, Never done it. Yeah, it's awesome, this, yeah. it's awesome, I love float tank. Um, hot and cold. Hot and mm-hmm. cold stuff, so yeah. cryotherapy right into a sauna, yeah. back into cryotherapy, back into a sauna. Um, awesome stuff for recovery. Um, but you spend a lot of time doing that, right? That That's what, you know, people do in a competitive mode. You know, uh, you can do the crude, crude version of that is ice baths, you know. So, but, uh, hey, calm down. Um so, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot, you know, I'm sure you guys train like crazy. You guys ran before you came here, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys yeah, were out did, there yeah. running. Uh, I, I know Ron had called me and said, yeah, we were just out running. We ran. How many miles did you just do today? Well, I did like six and a half because I went, I got there at eight o'clock. So I did a loop of like 
three and whatever. And then as soon as I got back, they pulled into the parking lot. And I was like, well, let's do the same loop again. So I just went back out again for a second time. <laughs> so you did 12 miles? No, no, six total. Like six I did like three oh, okay. something, and then they went out okay. back out with them for another okay. three. So, you know, it, and that's the dedication, right? I mean, you guys don't have to be doing that on a Sunday, right? You don't have to be, you know, but it's something you're doing for your fitness, for your competitive life, for, you know, you know keep yourself healthy. You know, um, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Um, sometimes the, the long, I love the long runs, but I also like the short sprint training, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, um, I do a lot of that with, uh, you know, doing 400 meter repeats or doing mm-hmm. 200 meter repeats or doing a, there's a, there's an actual, uh, method by Chris Henshaw that I utilize a lot where it's like you do like a 800, 600, 500, yeah. and you just bring it down yep. all the way down to 100. Then you go back yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's just, a, you know, when you rest for like a minute and a half, it's got programmed rest in it. And it really kind of helps you. But you want to train for that that fast paced stuff. You want to train for that moderate paced stuff. You want to train for that slower paced yeah. stuff, right? So you want to be able to pace yourself as well. And I think it's all important, you know. But when you're doing competitive training, very different than uh, than basically the the you know just training for for health and wellness. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, both are important. You know, yeah. um, you know, if you're a competitive athlete, you got to train that way. And like I said, I'm not sure exactly how healthy that is all the time to push right. your body to that level. But, you know, it's what we do, right? It's what people do when they, when they want to compete, and they want to compete well. Because mm-hmm. the difference between you winning or losing, you know, uh, actually someone asked me once, what's the difference between winning or losing a competition? I said, who shows up? <laughs> That's true. That's generally right. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's who comes that day. I mean, yeah. if I see somebody on the list, I'm like, oh, looks like I'm not going to Not going to happen. Yeah, not yeah. going to <laughs> not gonna happen today, but you know, because there's people you know that are just kind of out there that are that are just freaks, yeah. <laughs> freaks of freak athletes, um, you know, and that's that's all good, man. But uh, you know, we're we're already at an hour, man. Wow, wow. Can you believe that? It goes fast. Yeah. It goes really fast. Um, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything you think we we missed? Anything we should cover? I don't know. Anything you want? Anything you want to plug? Yeah. Fit aid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Talking about all these like extensive workouts and recoveries, like fit eight obviously helps. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, and, and uh, that's you know, like I said, I know a lot of us you know drink fit eight, and and you know it's it's definitely one of those things that. Uh, anything else? Any other sponsors you guys want to shout out to or anything? Oh uh, yeah, we do enjoy our gooder glasses. Okay, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's the awesome. uh, that's the official sunglass for our uh, team Ragnar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'll have to check them out. I got to get a pair. Yeah, we got a podium to defend this year. Yeah, we do. We're yeah. at uh, Wawayanda State Park. Okay, all New right. York, yeah. They still have the the Goliathon. Remember that? Remember Goliathon's Gol- still going on. Still, still going on. on. Yeah. yeah. All right. I only did that a couple years, and then I haven't done it since. But yeah, that's a that that's was a good one. That was a fun. Yeah, we lost that year to the uh, American Gladiator, or what was it? The American Ninja, Ninja, Ninja Warrior. Yeah, guys. Ninja Warrior team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they're the only ones who beat us. We came in second because we were. We were crushing obstacles. I don't yeah. know. Was it just you and me there in that one or anybody else here? I don't think anybody else here was Go there. Go back and look at the pictures. I'm sure we had yeah. more than just the two of us. Well, no, there were more than just the two of us, but <laughs> anybody else. It was just me and Ron. We beat them all. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Um, I'm trying to think that's the one I actually slept in my truck. I just I left work. I worked like an overnight. I just yeah. drove right down. Well, that's your that's, thing, that's man. Most, that's most races. Yeah, that's, that's his thing. He, yeah. Like, you see his truck there, you're like, oh. Ron's probably sleeping. Yeah. Or <laughs> Ron's sleeping in the truck. I know he's going to beat me that day. <laughs> yes. That's how Ron podiums every time. He's yeah. sleeping in the truck? Yeah. Well, that must be the thing you got. It's your ritual, it's man. Like, that, like that Hercules it. challenge or something you guys no, sent me yeah. to? Oh, yeah. yeah. I left it overnight, went right to Gwen's house, got out of the car, into his car, <laughs> got a 20-minute nap like on the way there. Uh-huh. I was at the start line. I'm like, all right, let's do this. And then I just first took place. first place. Yeah. Well, there you go, man. That, that's that, got to be your methodology at this we point. We're dragging trees down a <laughs> raceway. Like full trees. <laughs> <laughs> I think because at that point, like, I was already, like, awake. And, like, it wasn't like I didn't have to warm up. Like, I was awake all day. So, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it's not like you wake up and you're like, oh, now I got to stretch out, this and that. Like, I was already prepped and ready to go. Yeah. Like, I was tired. But, you know, take a little 20-minute power nap. But other than that, but I was ready. Yeah. Oh, like a second well, minute sometimes sleeping. Yeah. What's yeah. that? Like a stadium race, we're all still sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First set of stairs. All right, I'm awake now. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. it. You wake up in the run. I mean, yeah. Generally, Somebody you know. Somebody into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> that's like Thanks. Fen- Thanks, Fenway Sean. every year. By the time we get there, the sun's not even up yet. Because oh, it's yeah. in November. Yo, yeah. It's pitch black. And you're like, wait, shit, we got to go run now? <laughs> <laughs> Which race was that? Fenway. 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 Oh, yeah. Every year. Saturday. It's a layer of ice. Yeah. And there's always like a thin layer of ice somewhere. Oh, like Fenway's always cold. Yeah. Always, always a cold start. Always, always a cold start. Sunday. Sunday's like a 1030 start. 
Is it yes. really? Yeah, yeah. Fed, the, Did they change? Maybe not 10.30, oh, but nine, Sundays are all, usually later, yeah. Yeah, they changed, yeah. They changed it then. Because I remember the first year we did it, it was, it was considered the time trials. They were going mm-hmm. to um, actually make that a qualifier for the elite yeah. heat. That yeah. was the talk. You know, they were going to make that a qualifier for that. But uh, that never took off, I no. guess. But, uh, you know, I remember doing that race for the first time. I still actually have the original sweatshirt, which is really faded now. I have mine. Yeah. yeah. That was and Fenway yeah, 2012. Nice. Yeah, 2012. Stadium, yeah. It says time trial yep. on the back of it. It's pretty cool. It's, yeah. uh, but and, and I'll never get rid of that. I hardly wear it because yeah. I just don't want to fade it out anymore. Because well, that's when we have the cool medals, shirt. too, where the stadiums... Actually had the stadiums on the medals. Yeah, it wasn't just the generic. Now medal. it's a generic yeah. one at all the stadiums. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, like I said, they got to do what they got to do. Yep. You know, you got to keep a business running. Yeah. Um, but it's still a fun business. Still a fun uh, race to do. Um, you know, I know. Uh, what is it? Citibank Park is next week. Right? Citizens Bank. Yeah. Citizens yeah. Bank. Why do I keep saying Citibank Park? I think I put City Field. City in Field. That. Yeah, <laughs> put them both together. But. Uh, you know, uh, are you guys all going out to that one? Uh, I think just Ron and I, right? You guys aren't I'll going. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be uh, at a CrossFit thing. <laughs> right. Oh, CrossFit they have day. CrossFit that day. We have Spartan Race. Okay, yeah. so you guys are all busy, man, and working. <laughs> um, I'm, i got to figure out what I'm going to do. I may come out and do that race yeah. uh, next week just because. I love that race. Yeah, it's a it's fun a race. race. Good one. It's a fun one. It's close. You yeah. know what? It takes 45 minutes, an hour from here to get right. there. And, and you just jump in there and you go out and have a good time. So That's the good thing about this Dogs region. are going crazy in there. Um, but anyway, all right. So if there's nothing else, guys, thank you again for coming on. Thank I mean, you. this no, this was you. a fun time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Hope you had a good time. And uh, you know, drink Fit Eight, um, <laughs> and uh, check out Gators Eyewear too. They're on my thing. And, and what was the sunglasses? That was the Gooders. Yeah. Gooders. Gooders. Gooders sunglasses. Check them out. Um, and uh, check out Jojo Jojo Photo. Uh, she is the sponsor of this episode today. So uh, check that out on Instagram and on uh, pixie.com. Uh, so, uh, guys, have a great day. Thank you well, for coming thanks. on again. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, all right.